What is up guys and welcome to Mythical Musings. So this is going to be a special two-parter episode where we compare the 147 Delphic Maxims that are said to be written by the god Apollo and compare it to the 42 Laws of Ma'at, which is kind of the laws to live by to be a moral and better person in Egyptian polytheism and paganism and so like i said this episode is going to be unique as it's going to be a two-parter so the first part that you're going to see today this week is going to be focusing on the delphic maxims aphrodite child and i read over them all and see what they mean to us today and then in our next episode we're going to look at the 42 laws of ma'at talk about who ma'at is and see how that applies in the differences between, again, the Delphic Maxims and the Laws of Ma'at. So I hope you guys enjoy these two episodes, and I thank you for watching. So I know that some people are asking, that may be asking, what we said the Delphic Max Maxims and the 42 Laws of Ma'at. And some people may not know what the Delphic Maxim are, the Maxims are. So, so I guess we'll get started because I'll tell you what they are, and then we'll read them. In tonight's show, we're going to see how they apply to our lives. And a lot of them apply especially to my life because I hold myself, and I'll, as we go through it, I'll explain, to the, law, to the Delphic Maxims and why. Um, so what the Delphic Maxims are, are a set of morals. They're moral precepts that were inscribed in the Temple of Apollo in the ancient precinct of Delphi. So the three best known Delphic Maxims were Know Thyself, Nothing in Excess, and Give a Pledge and trouble is at hand. They were prominently located at the entrance to the temple and were traditionally said to have been authored by the seven sages of Greece or even Apollo. So some say that Apollo himself um, uh, authored these maxims. So there is 147 maxims um, that have been attributed to the god Apollo or the seven sages. Uh, and the seven sages of Greece, just so you know, I won't have to go into all of them. They were a title given to classic Greek uh, philosophers, statesmen, and lawgivers of the 7th to 6th century BCE who were known for their wisdom. So that's who the seven sages were. And so they came up with the maxims, or the god Apollo did. Like I said, there was 147 of them that were written on the temple of Apollo in Delphi. and um, they were throughout the temple. Um, it actually says that in the Roman era um, that Pliny the Elder said that they had been inscribed in gold, which I thought was really interesting. So like I said, so the Delphic Maxims were best, basically morals to live by when it came to being a better person in life. And so we'll go through them and just see what we think of them. Um, and then we'll talk about the 42 laws of Ma'at and compare. Um, so the first Delphic maxim is follow God or the gods. Two is obey the law. Number three is worship the gods. Then respect your parents. Number five is be overcome by justice. And then know what you have learned. Perceive what you have heard. Be yourself. So I think that be yourself is an important one. So I think that we should always strive to always be who we are, not being afraid who we are. Okay, so here is the one that may not translate to today. So number nine is intend to get married. So I'm just curious, what do you think about that Delphi Maxim, Aphrodite Child, to intend to get married? I don't think that really um, applies to a lot of people because, you know, um, relationships, a lot of relationships sometimes don't work out for people. You know, people can't be expected to marry someone who isn't right for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that can only really apply to someone if they're generally, you know, in a happy couple, you know, and aiming to get married and you know um because that sometimes really doesn't apply to everyone you no know, it all depends on what sort of relationship that they've got really right 
I would say so to some may not apply. Right. I know that's a big controversial one. Everyone always brings that up as uh, one that they're like, uh, because nowadays in the 21st century, uh, some people don't want to get married. So a lot of people don't really think of it. And um, the Duffet maxims are more of suggestions to live a better life rather than strict rules to get into the afterlife, which is opposite of what the 42 laws of Ma'at are. I know that we'll talk about later. So this is just to make you happy. This is what they suggested, basically. Um, but, and it says, know your opportunities. I like that one. That's the next one. So to always know what's presented to you and take advantage of your opportunities. Okay, so this is the one I want to talk about as well as the next one is think as a mortal. So when I think as a mortal, what do you think that means, Aphrodite, Sean? Like think, think like, think like to how your own mind is, not like superior. Right. Yep. Keep grounded that you're not a god mm -hmm. or goddess. <laughs> And to realize that life is super fragile, too, is what I always take it as, is that, you know, you got your daredevils and stuff, that you that we're not invincible to live life in the moment and to continue on that way as well. So if you are a stranger, act like one is the next one. So honor the home. And then 14 is to control yourself. So what do you think, what would you say about controlling yourself? What does that mean if I, if you read control yourself? Like, don't let yourself get, uh, I would say don't let yourself get carried away with things. Like always be in control mm -hmm. of your own self, I would say, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And help your friends. Control anger. Exercise prudence. Honor providence. So here's a big one that always sticks with me is number 19 is do not use an oath. So basically, I always take that as, um, you base, and I take it to the extreme and say don't make promises, especially ones that you can't keep because it keep you don't know. So what do you think? If, you, if I said do not use an oath, would you take that as don't make promises? Uh, or, or don't pledge anything that you can't do, basically. What do you think, Aphrodite Child? I thought that one was always interesting. I would say so. I mean, I'm not really the sort of person, you know, to make a promise that I know I wouldn't be able to keep. I only tend to make promises with people that I generally can keep. I know that, you know, if I make a promise, it'll happen. Um, because you never know that, you know, about... Because someone could be expecting something that you've promised and it doesn't happen and it could end up causing a bit of a problem with that person. So, yeah, you should never take an oath unless you can keep it. Right. And I don't promise anything. <laughs> it's bad to say, but I don't really promise anything uh, since I started reading these and actually taking it. That's one of the things I always follow, that if I say something, I'm going to do it. So I really try hard to uh, follow that of do not use an oath because if I say something, I try to do it and I feel bad mm -hmm. for myself. And I think I've let myself down in the purse down, obviously, if I don't do deliver what I said I was going to do. So that one's always a big one to me. And then number 20 is love friendship. So why should we love our friends, Aphrodite Child? Because friends are always going to be there, <clears throat> even in, the bad times, you know, they're never really going to disappear. There's a saying that boyfriends come and go, but friends will always be there. Right. Yeah. So if you have good friends, definitely hold on to them and let them, people know that, let them know that you care because they're there because sometimes we have friends when we don't have family and sometimes yeah. friends can become our family as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So cling to discipline. Um, so that kind of goes back to non nothing in excess. Pursue honor, long for wisdom, praise the good, find fault with no one. So what do you, <laughs> that's a hard one too. Do you think that's relevant for today? Because I know that's one that I struggle with that I watch myself is find fault with no one. So what do you, what would you say that would mean after that job? Well, that's tricky because not everyone has a fault with them. 
Um, but there are people out there that do, and you can't help but notice that because of the way that they are. So you can't help but find a fault with them, you know, going on to how you get threatened things. Um, yeah, that is a tricky one. Right. And yeah, because it's, it's hard not to find faults with people, especially if they're bringing it on. Right. Yeah, you can't really see. You can't really see good. That is true. Yes. It's tricky. That is true. So we want to always praise virtue, and practice what is just and good, and be kind to your friends. And watch out for your enemies. <laughs> Exercise nobility of character and shun evil. Uh, be impartial. Uh, guard what is yours. Shun, shun what belongs to others. So that's a hard one for some people too. You know, you always want to shun what belongs to others. And listen to everyone. What do you think that means? Aphrodite child. Listen to everyone. Mm hmm Well, like listen to everyone who has who who has sense in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always being an open ear. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the ones that always stuck out to me, especially what I do for a career and stuff is listen to everyone because sometimes drama comes up and you need to hear both sides of the story. So you always want to not make judgments and listen to everyone is the way I always take it. And I apply it to my life. Okay. Here's a, here's an interesting one for you. Be religiously silent. So I didn't research it. So if you read be religiously silent, what would you think that would mean? Are the ones that gatekeep need to shut up. <laughs> That's a good one actually. So yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That is a good one. So, yeah, we can actually apply it to that for real. So, yeah, if be religiously silent, um, that if for real. And so, if we can take that to mean that, yeah, if someone is experiencing the gods, who are we to say anything? So, I, 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 like, I like it that way. What do you think, Aphrodite Child? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like so do a favor for a friend. So nothing to excess. So what do you think about nothing to excess? Because that's one of the big ones. So nothing to excess. I don't know what 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 does it mean? And so nothing to the extreme. Um not so a lot of people say it's not eating too much. Not, not drinking too much. Uh, not watching TV too much. In the negatives or the pleasures, either way, don't do. Too, it's good to have a little bit, but just don't take too much of it. Basically. Oh yeah, I mean you don't want to be watching like too much TV and constantly eating, you know, like crap all the time. Um, yeah, I would imply that in a day of life because it may encourage you to get out more. Mm. You know, like do like go on nature walks or. You know, do a bit of um, history, you know, exploring and things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's a good one to encourage because it'll encourage you to get out. Right. And it could also mean don't work too much. So it means everything, mm -hmm. nothing in excess. Don't be a workaholic that you're not there for your family. I mean, we mm -hmm. eat everything. You just want everything in moderation, as they say, without mm -hmm. neglecting the important stuff in life. So that's a big one. Use time sparingly. So always being aware that every moment counts. So don't waste time is what it always means to me. So what do you think? Use time sparingly. Is that what that would mean to you, Aphrodite child? Yeah. Yep. Foresee the future is the next one. I guess that means plan for the future. Don't live in the moment, but you plan for what is to come. A lot of people are short-sighted. And they do a lot of things for the now without really planning what is going to be ahead. So I know that that's one I have, I always struggle with. 
that I like to live in the moment a lot of the times. And I know that we really need to start like saving money and planning for mm-hmm. the future. So, yeah. So despise insolence. So despise insolence. In other words, despise rudeness and people that are being just flat out rude to you. I have respect for people asking for help. It says respect for the suppliants. In other words, having respect for people that are actually coming to you and asking for help. Being accommodated in everything. Educate your children. So that is obviously a big one now. So give what you have. In fear, deceit. And here's a big one that a lot of people struggle with. Speak well of everyone. So, what do you think of that, Aphrodite Child? To speak well of everybody. Well, uh, that, that's again, a struggle. yeah. Well, the thing is, you can only speak well about people if you, if they've done, you know, well to you. Because if they haven't, how are you supposed to speak well about them? Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get that one. It's, it's a bit tricky. I guess it just because saying, yeah, that even your enemies you don't want to lower to their level. You just if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Kind of thing. I guess is what it means. Yeah. So I thought that. Yeah, because was- you can't. Yes, yeah, you can't really speak well about people when they've not really done it to you. Mm. But then, but then it could also mean like don't lo- don't lower yourself to their standards either. Right. Mm. Mm. Uh, be a seeker of wisdom, and choose what is divine. So, what would that mean? So, choose what is divine. So, would that Doing the right thing would be another way of saying that, I guess. Yeah, like doing the right thing, like leaving um, positive impacts on people by doing the right thing, I would say. Mm. Act when you know. (laughs) Don't do anything unless you know what you're doing. And I think this is the one that everyone agrees with is shun murder, <laughs> shun murder. So what does that mean, Aphrodite Child? Is don't kill anybody, please. <laughs> no. So here is a serious one that um, actually play plays a part in my prayer life. It is pray for things possible. <clears throat> or I tell you what I think that means. What does that mean if I tell you to pray for things possible? Like pray for things that that are in reach, like are possible things, and not pray for like something that's impossible. Like for example, don't pray um, for things like winning the lottery because to some people that's impossible. You know, just pray for things that appear more realistic to you, rather than praying for things that unrealistic. Right. Exactly. So that that one I actually do take to heart. So not to get really real or something, but when dad was in the hospital, um, that was the one thing that got me through was that Duffin Maxim was praying for things possible. Instead of praying for people, sick people to just get out of their bed healed, you know, you're praying for your doc, the doctors to give you the right things that you need to hear, not what you want to hear and stuff like that. And I think it actually uh, makes you less disappointed when something, you know, extravagant doesn't happen, you know. So it's more of a realistic prayer. So that was a big one to me. So consult the wise. Um, So that's one we need more of, too, is consult the wise. Test the character. Give back what you have received. Don't, Don't look down to anybody. Use your skills. Do what you mean to do. Honor a benef- benefaction. Let's see. Okay, so this is a hard one too, is to be jealous of no one. So if I tell you to be jealous of no one, what do you think of that, Aphrodite Child? What does that mean to be jealous of no one? Yeah, jealousy is like um, kind of like a, 
when someone has like I don't know a Gucci bag and you get jealous because you've got one and, and they've got one, but does it really matter really? Right. They've got one and you haven't. Right. I mean, it's just a bloody bag at the end of it, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I could take it a step further and say, don't be jealous that someone's dating somebody that you're not, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so it's interesting. Um, so be on your guard. Praise hope. Despise a slanderer. Okay, so what does that mean to despise to despise a slanderer? Someone talking bad about you. <laughs> I like that one. This, this, but yeah, despise a slanderer. Yeah. Yep, yep. So it says, um, just be basically stay away from people that are saying bad things about you. You just basically stay away from them. Mm -hmm. So gain possessions justly. Uh, so don't steal. Honor good men. Um, I don't not really. I haven't looked into this one. This one's interesting. Know the judge. I'm curious. <laughs> I don't think it's not literally know the judge. If you go to court, know the judge, and you'll be good. So, what would you think if reading know the judge? What is your interpretation of that? The deities, really, because they're the judges, I would say. I like that. Yep, so know the judge. Know who's judging you and why yeah. they're judging you. So, yeah, you can, take, you can definitely take it that way. Master wedding feasts. Recognize fortune. So the way I take recognize fortune means that, um, I guess, realizing what you have and um, saving what you have is what I take it as. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Recognize fortune. What would you say that would mean? Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Recognize mm. what you have. So here's another one. Talking about not making a promise or a pledge. The next one on number 69 is flee a pledge. So again, it's saying never promise anything. Uh, never pledge to anything. Like I said, that's one I actually really hold on to. I, like, I don't really like to make promises unless I know I'm going to come through with it. So that's one I mm. daily think about. So with that said, speak plainly. I like that one. So what does speak plainly mean, Aphrodite child? <laughs> it's like, keep things simple. Like, you tell me yeah. what you're really going to say. Oh, I can't tell you what I'm really going to say. It's not PG-18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of our conversations, that see, yeah, what you and I say to each other, like, speak plainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, associate with your peers is the next one. Govern your expenses. So there it is about saving money again. And being happy with what you have. I really like that one. So I think that's the one that I think everyone really needs to focus on is just being happy with what you have. I mean, it'd be great to have more, but what you have, if you have a roof on your head, if you're watching this show, you have internet. So be happy with <laughs> what you have. Do you have anything to add to being happy with what you have? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's people out there that are wishing that they had a Louis Vuitton bag and Gucci bag, but I don't wish I had any of them things, you know, because it's sort of life, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up with, you know, I never had anything like that, nor do I want anything like that. You know, even when, you know, even when I would have had money, I still wouldn't want one. You know, I'm happy with my waterproof bags, my Marilyn Monroe bags. You know, I'm happy with those. Mm. You know, it don't really bother me about Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Chanel. Don't bother me about that. You know, I've never really had an interest in them things because the sort of stuff that I that I go for, I'm on my sort of thing, I'm on my sort of style. You know, like my waterproof handbags, my, you know, my greece roman egyptian handbags and purses and you know um my titanic handbags you know marilyn monroe stuff so you know that's more me so i'm happy with that i don't wish that i wish had different right you got like cool I've never, I've, yeah i've never i've never wished that never yeah same here but yeah you got a lot of cool stuff so i don't blame you for being happy with what you have because yeah. 
<laughs> ancient Greek bags and all that stuff. That stuff's really cool. Yeah, I've got <laughs> I've got a Pegasus wallet, um, and that's also waterproof as well. And it has a seashell on it. I put a seashell on it. A scallop on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I have a hundred questions, but that's more of a private private conversation. Like I just want to ask you, like, what's your favorite bag and all that stuff. But I, that can wait till well, later. Well, well, actually, my favorite bag is well, I have all of them. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Having so many bags, I'm sure it's hard to figure out which one you want to have for tomorrow, even. Yeah, well, my, my rucksacks are what I usually use with Marek, you know, when we go out quite, quite a lot. Um, so I just I just like having my hands free, you know, with them. Um, so I use my rucksacks quite a lot. Mm. They're just very convenient when you've got kids. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I get the feeling of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can relate to that. All right, so this one's interesting. 74 is revere a sense of shame. So that's interesting. So what do you think if uh, to honor a sense of shame? I'll tell you what I think, but what do you think that would mean? Honoring a sense of shame. Well, we've all got things that we're not going to be ashamed about. Mm-hmm. Right. To me, it means to stay humble is the way I take it, is to, you know, don't get big-headed about it. Mm. Is that kind of what yeah. you get? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, like stay, always, like, stay grounded in things. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fulfill the favor. I thought it said fill the flavor is what I thought the next one was, but <laughs> taste the rainbow, I guess, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a Skittles commercial. Uh, I like this one. So the next one is pray for happiness. So that's a good one. So if I say pray for happiness, what do you think of that effort? I I like that one. Yeah, it's just like a positive sort of thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm praying for, you know, happiness. All around, yeah. Yeah. And then be fond of fortune. Observe observe what you have heard. Work for what you can own. So despise strife. Um, detest disgrace. Rest- okay, here's a big one. Restrain the tongue. So what does that mean, to restrain the tongue? Yeah, like... Yeah, um, yeah, like to, yeah, I do have a good snack for me now. <laughs> so, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all, basically, yeah. Yeah, like, 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 hold your tongue, so yeah. that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, or if you say, yeah, and sometimes if you say something stupid, I, I've learned to hold my tongue as well before I say some more dumb stuff, so it can mean, a so that actually means a lot of things, if you go say something mm-hmm. Rude, or if you want to say something dumb, dumb, definitely think before you speak. Basically, is what I think it means. So keep yourself from insolence or disrespect. Make just judgments. Use what you have. Judge incorruptibly. Accuse one who is present. I like that one. So accuse one who is present. So I know what that means. So if I said to accuse one that's present, what would you think that would mean, Aphrodite Child? Um, like accusing, like accuse the one who's done it, that sort of thing? Yeah, accuse someone that is actually there. In other words, don't talk behind people's backs is the way I've always mm-hmm. took it. It's to accuse one's present means that you, you can talk, you can confront somebody, but don't talk about them behind their back. Mm-hmm. So. Tell when you know. Uh, do not depend on strength. Is that one? So there's a lot of them. That's why I'm going through these pretty fast. <laughs> live without sorrow. So live without regrets. So that's one I think that we should really um, 
live. Uh, that's one I take to heart too. Is like live your life and live without regrets. Live together meekly. Finish the race without shrinking back. Deal kindly with everyone. <laughs> do not curse your children. So what do you think about that one, Aphrodite Child, since we both have children? So do not curse yeah, like, your children. <laughs> see, I took cursing. I took cursing as like swearing, like don't swear at them. But that's right. because I'm British. So, so cursing to me means swearing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I know that's hard sometimes to do is don't curse your children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like we've been little twits. You can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's that for sure. Been little devils. Yeah, that's why I took it too. I know that's not what it means, but it said don't curse your children because I've been there too. So, you yeah. know. <laughs> But like I'm sure. I but call my child a little Trump sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure what is actually, if you want to get super deep about it, I guess don't curse your children. It could kind of mean, kind of don't spo don't spend all your money to make it hard. Don't do anything that's going to make it harder for your children. I guess is what you could take it as. If yeah. that's spending all your money or whatever, you can take that like I said as you want it. But I like that. Don't curse your children. My head went there too. Don't curse. My thought was don't curse at your children is the mm -hmm. more accurate one. Okay. Here's the one that definitely doesn't apply. I want to know your opinion of number 95 is rule your wife. So what is that Aphrodite child to rule your wife? <laughs> I'd, I'd give them fellow clip round bleeding ear all if they do all like that to me. No chance. <laughs> like who the hell do they think they are? Rule the wife. If that's the case then I'll rule the husband then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't like that one because it sounds a bit controlling. It does, and I'm sure it was back then to rule your wife. So what do you think about rule rule your husband? What do you think about that one if it was reversed? <laughs> Yeah, that'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so benefit yourself. Okay, so what would that mean, would you think, to benefit yourself? <clears throat> I'm sure it doesn't mean the obvious being selfish. So benefiting yourself. It's like, yeah, because it's like I'll speak from a parent point of view. It's like sometimes, you know, when you when when you're a parent, you focus a lot on your kids, like your clothes and sense. So you kind of forget about yourself and your own needs. And as a parent, you know, you need to learn that it's okay to treat yourself as well, like buy yourself new clothes and things. Mm. Um I mean, there's been times where I've been so focused on you know, my little boy that I forget about myself and buying myself new clothes and things. So I just kind of forget that I exist sometimes because, I, you know, it's rare that I'm actually buying myself new clothes. So, you know, it's kind of like a reminder to like that it's okay to buy yourself new clothes as well. <laughs> you know, you need to put yourself, you know, into consideration as well. Definitely. A hundred percent. I think that's what it is. Benefit yourself is don't forget about yourself. I mean, we give some mm -hmm. money to others. Definitely do things for yourself as well. So mm -hmm. I like that. So being courteous, give a timely response. That's a big thing where I work is that if something good or bad, let someone know now or relatively soon. Don't, if I do something wrong, don't tell me about it in two or three weeks. Tell me about it now so I can change uh, so mm -hmm. giving a timely response, so that's pretty obvious. So struggle with glory. So struggling with glory, I guess that would mean to me is that trying to stay humble again. Mm -hmm. If I said struggle with glory, you know, not getting big headed. When you think about the same, if you heard that. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the big one. Number 100, act without repenting. So whatever you do, don't be sorry for what you did is what I would say that would mean. And then, okay, now, with that said, the next one, repent of sins. 
is the next one. So that doesn't mean in the Christian way, repent of sins. What would that mean to you? Uh, outside of the Christianity standard of what sins is, what do you think that means? Like, come clean about your trouble and kind of, like, don't tell lies. Mm -hmm. and kind of, like, be truthful, I would say. So I'm trying to, like, take it away from the Christianity concept. You know, um, but, yeah, just try and kind of, like, be truthful, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, repentance and saying sorry uh, if you've ever done any yeah. wrong to anybody. So yeah. that's what it would be. Um, <laughs> I like this one. This is the one we all struggle with, I think, is control the eye. So what does that mean, after day child, if, I, if we have to control the eye? Yeah, I would say kind of like the like evil glances. Mm -hmm. It could be that, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because that's the first thing, that's the first thing that came to me, kind of like control like the evil glances. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. Yeah. I also took it as the mm -hmm. more obvious way of eyes up here, buddy, and kind of thing, controlling the eye, you know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely that, too, that we need to also That's how my mind's interpreted that, like, something completely different. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I when got you said, when you said when you said like the eyes appear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like control the eye, and keeping not a wandering eye, but controlling the eye in every way. I like the what you said yeah. better. I like that. So giving timely counsel, acting quickly, guard friendship, being grateful, pursue harmony. Uh, keep deeply the top secret. I like that one. So if someone tells you something that's super important, I know we always want to tell everyone, but if it's super important, obviously you want to honor the person, keep it to yourself. So feel, fear ruling, pursue what is profitable, <laughs> it profitable, accept the measure, accept due measure, do away with enmities, Oh, man. And then, what does it mean to accept old age, Aphrodite child? Accepting old age. I can't accept old age yet. Yeah. Well, you're still it's... young, so. <laughs> yes, I can't accept that yet. I'm not, I'm not really... in that I it's just I don't know it's like it's just something that you that you can't accept yet mm -hmm. I mean I mean when it comes yeah just uh, you know to to age gracefully you know without having getting Botox and things don't you know just age naturally yeah you know that sort of thing because obviously we all we all have to age it's comes with you know life and things you know we can't stay 18 forever. We have to wait. Right. When everything gets old and everything kind of reaches its time eventually, you know, not everything stays working forever. Right. I think that one actually really applies to this day and age, like you said, that we have to accept old age. Uh, everyone is really focused on staying young or young looking. And that's definitely one that I think really applies to accept old age. It hit me the other day. I got super depressed. You know, they always ask, where do you see yourself in five years at your job? Or where do you see yourself in 10, self in 10 years? And it hit mm -hmm. me <laughs> that in 10 years, I'm going to be 50 years old. It hit me the other day. So I was thinking about that question. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 50 in 10 years. Like, it's like, where's the time go, you know? So maybe I need to accept mm -hmm. that that's coming as well. Mm. so don't boast in might exercise religious silence again flee animosity acquire wealth justly do not abandon honor despise evil so we're almost at the end of this so it's um venture into danger prudently 
do not uh, tire of learning. So here's one. Here's one that applies to both of us. Do not stop to be thrifty. So how is that, Aphrodite Child? So don't stop being thrifty. <laughs> don't stop being thrifty. Yeah, I know we're fans of thrifty. I know. Saving money. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, don't stop shopping at charity shops. That's right. That's what I like to do, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I want to stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah, Apollo's saying shop at your, at your local antique store. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Same yeah. Room. yeah. Uh, admire oracles. Love who you rear. In other words, whoever you raise, love who you raise. I like that one. Do not oppose someone who's absent. In other words, don't hate someone that's not around. Respect your elders. So that's actually one of the Delphic maxims, Aphrodite Child. So what are we thinking about respecting our elders? Because that's what everybody always says. Like our parents and grandparents. Yep. Yep. Uh, every, always respecting your elders. I thought that was interesting. That was there. So teach your young. Do not trust money or wealth. And respect yourself. So respect yourself. Do not begin to be rude. Crown, honor your ancestors. Die for your country. That's a big one. Do Okay, here's one I want to talk about. Do not be discontented with life. What do you think that would mean if I told you don't be discontented with life? So that means be happy with what you have. Don't be sad about your life, but enjoy what life you have is what mm -hmm. it would mean to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sometimes, you know, people wish that they generally had, you know, that they weren't living the life that they lived. Mm -hmm. And when you're actually from an outsider looking in to some, to someone's life, it's like, they don't realize that people are actually are wishing that they had it. So this is why they should never really take it for granted. I like that. You know, yeah. because there'd be others that be wishing that they had it. That's right, yeah. Yeah, don't ever be discontented with what you have, because some people, like you said, do wish they had the life you have, for sure. I like that. And here's the big one that actually applies to Egyptian stuff as well. Uh, do not, so do not make fun of the dead. So they always say, don't speak, speak ill of the dead. That is actually a Delphic maxim is don't speak ill of the dead. So I thought that was another one that people apply as well to today. So share the load with the unfortunate, gratify without harming, grieve for no one, uh, beget from noble routines. Make promises to no one. Do not wrong the dead. Be well off as a mortal. Do not trust money. Okay, now here's the life lessons at the end. As a child, be well behaved. As a youth, be self-disciplined. As a middle-aged person, be just. As an old man, be sensible. And reaching the end without sorrow is the last one so it ends with how we should be in life and that is the Delphic maxim so what do you think overall i think that it's um for uh, reading them over again i thought that actually most of them actually applied to could apply to apply to us now what are your thoughts about that i would say so i mean there there are some in there that you can in, interpret in, into your own life Mm -hmm. and live by them as like a guidance for yourself really so there you go guys so a pretty interesting episode looking at the duffing maxims so i think aphrodite child and i agree that the majority of them can still be used for today and the thing that i thought was really interesting is that people have their own interpretations of what the duffing maxims can mean because they were just written on the walls of the temple of apollo and I have a feeling that not everyone knew exactly 
the deep meaning behind each and every one. So I'm sure people of the past had their own interpretations of what these laws and Duffet maxims meant. And so they could uh, interpret it their way and apply it to their life, making them more universal. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And if you want to find my friend, my bestie, <laughs> my co-host, Aphrodite Child, she is everywhere. So you can find her on her Facebook page, Aphrodite, Goddess of Love and Sea, on RMS Titanic, Queen of the Ocean. And she is also on the Pick the Pagan Discord page if you'd like to reach out and talk to her. And also on YouTube as well, at Aphrodite Child, which I'll always put the links below. So I hope you guys tune in next week and we talk again about the 42 Laws of Ma'at who is the goddess Ma'at, and even a comparison between Ma'at and Apollo. So I hope you guys tune in for next show, and we will see you later, alligator. Bye.